it was fascinating when you had like there were entire passages where you literally had like on this day the temperature was and you could for a week trace that and it was just kind of fascinating to see that kind of the the movement the kind of differences in temperatures that you have yeah um, yeah and, and to try to relate that data back to what soldiers and mm -hmm. armies were experiencing in an effort to better explain what was happening we can talk about again we can talk about mcclellan going up the peninsula it really helps to know how many days during that campaign it rained yeah. and how much it rained and the fact that it rained a lot more in 1862 than it did in 1861 or 1863. I mean, it, it adds to what we know about the ultimate failure of the Peninsula campaign. I really yes. think it does. Yes. Um, and we'll definitely talk about Mike Clown a little bit later too. You, you kind of opened the door for like three different questions that I had in my mind. So you, you, you mentioned in your last answer that sometimes you have soldiers talking about like, um, it felt hot that day. And one of the things that kind of, I mean, we both live in the South, so hot means something very different to us than to, to, to a person, say, from New York or from Michigan. Yes. And I kind of wondered of how, in part how you, when a soldier says it's hot and you don't have, for example, the numbers from, say, the Smithsonian survey, how do you quantify that? Can, can you put a number to, say, a Michigander saying it's hot in Alabama versus a Alabamian saying it's hot in Southern Tennessee. Yeah, there, there, there are different ways to do that. Um, you know, I think about when I write about the Vicksburg campaign, where you really do lack credit. Um, and so, so soldiers are saying, gee, it was really hot today. Or, it, wasn't, it was pleasant today. It wasn't so bad. Um, I noticed sometimes that was regional, that the more, well, the farther north the soldier came from, the hotter Vicksburg seemed, um, which I think tells us something, you know, really interesting regionally and culturally about, about how these men viewed weather. Um, so that's one approach. It doesn't work really well by itself, but it tells us something. We, you know, we know what, average Junes are like in Vicksburg over time. So, you know, lacking anything else, you can sort of assume that you've got a certain range there that would be typical. Um, sometimes I would look at the qualitative stuff and say, well, the qualitative material seems to uh, agree with the average. And there are also times when the soldier data would suggest that it was a lot rainier than it was supposed to be in, in you know, this month in Chattanooga. You can do that. That helps some. Um, I also do a certain degree of extrapolation, especially in the Western theater. So, for example, you know, we don't know what the temperature was at Chickamauga. We know what the temperature was in Clarksville. Clarksville is you know, halfway across Tennessee, so you can't just use that number and expect it to be correct. But, I mean, there are meteorological tables out there, and you can discover that, um, I can't remember the exact number, but I'll make this up, you can discover that Chattanooga is typically three degrees cooler than Clarksville in, in June and at, or, or in September. And at that point, you can make some educated guesses. I think it's really important to tell the reader that's what you're doing, mm -hmm. that we don't have that hard data. But you can, I think you can at least buy a ticket to get in the ballpark. And that's more than what we have. One of my real hopes for this book is that people will read it and say, wow, this, this, this Ken No guy's an idiot. He didn't realize that we're in our library. We've got this wonderful account of, of, of weather conditions and temperature at Vicksburg in June 1863. Well, I will dance and cheer because the more of this hard data that we can get out into the public, the more we will know as Civil War scholars, and maybe 20 or 30 years from now when somebody sits down to rewrite that book, this book, they'll have a lot more data than I can. Um, so I hope it does that. It's tough sometimes, it's frustrating sometimes. When I would write those Virginia chapters, it was really, really comfortable to know what the temperature was at Fort Monroe or in Washington. When I'm, when I'm writing about uh, you know, activities in Arkansas, 
or the Indian Territory. I didn't have that. Uh, I mean, the chapters have to be a little different. All we can do is make educated hypotheses, and hopefully that will do until something better comes along.